passive voice, verb tense, parallel structure, dialogue, the Oxford comma, adverbs, dangling participles, interrogative pronouns, prepositions, indentation, punctuation, semicolons. You can do all of that stuff right, but it won't matter if your writing doesn't do this one thing. The bestsellers list has at times been dominated by novels with flat characters, predictable settings, mediocre descriptions, and pathetic prose. Yet still hordes of readers are attracted to these miserable manuscripts. It all comes down to one thing. Emotion. The reason that you clicked on this video, the reason you bought those jeans you're wearing, and the reason that a reader will like or dislike your novel all comes down to emotion. Your skill as a writer is mostly determined by your ability to make a reader feel scared, or sad, or mad, or euphoric, or aroused. Of all the things you need to learn as a writer, bringing out emotion in the reader is at the top of the list. This is a different issue than showing the emotions of your characters. This is about making your reader feel emotions, which might not be what the characters are feeling. The two are often correlated, but not necessarily the same. In fact, sometimes it's the exact opposite. If the rival, smug, evil sports ball team defeats our hero's 23 baskets to 4 baskets, then they are going to feel victorious elation, whereas the reader should feel anger and disgust. So let's talk about some of the ways to make your readers reach for the tissue. Because they're sad, not for the other. First off, think about how you manage white space. Yes, that's right. Writing is as much about the words you're not writing as the words you actually are writing. The speed that someone will read through a section is very important. If you imagine a dialogue exchange with no tags, no action beats, no description in between the lines of dialogue, that's going to feel a lot faster, more quippy, maybe more intense than a more drawn out exchange with lots of description and beats and whatnot in between what the characters are saying. White space affects how fast the reader goes through a section and this ties into the emotional feel of it. Shorter paragraphs will create a sense of anticipation as the reader moves through them quickly. Longer paragraphs will give the words more time to settle, give the reader a little bit more time to process what's going on. Neither technique evokes more or less emotion, just different kinds of emotion. Different feelings in the reader, which may be what you want them to feel at different times. If you've just had a very impactful scene like a character death, then you may want less white space to slow the reader down and give them time for the previous part of the story to settle in. You should always be thinking about the impact of the words you aren't writing. Use white space to your advantage. It might take some time to figure out, but it's a really crucial element. And time is another important element. Emotions are kind of weird. Sometimes they just sort of spring up without any prior warning like the last time I flew into a blind rage at the Dunkin' Donuts drive through But you also often need to be in the right headspace to feel a certain emotion. Like, you can be reading the most humorous scene imaginable, but if you just watched a truckload of puppies crash into a blender factory, then you're probably not in the right frame of mind to enjoy that scene. Any emotional scene, no matter how well it can evoke emotion, can be ruined by the feelings the reader has going into it, and these feelings are affected by what they've just read. If your story requires a massive change in emotional tone, then you need to give the reader time to transition. Now, sometimes we don't want to give them transitions. Sometimes we want the story to press on without giving them an opportunity to process what has just happened. If a character dies in battle, but there's still like a million orcs threatening the rest of the cast, then both the characters and the reader probably aren't going to have time to mourn. Giving time for emotions to fester or process, letting them arise at the right moments, all while keeping the pacing of the story engaging, is a challenging thing to do, but it gets easier with the last point, and that is to focus on grounded writing. I've talked in previous videos about the difference between concrete and abstract writing. Abstract writing is about ideas, high-level sort of 
generalizations, whereas concrete writing is more descriptive and detailed and more grounded. Abstract writing is like reading a news report from a scene. Concrete writing is like being on the ground of that scene. When we talk about emotions, we often use very abstract terms to describe them. Love, anger, jealousy, joy are all very abstract ideas, but in order to evoke emotion, we need to lean on concrete language. Emotions are mostly triggered through sensory information. When you see a gray wolf with its hackles raised, you immediately feel fear. When you see someone drip soup on their chin without wiping it off, you feel disgust. When two friends embrace after a long time apart, you feel joy. You can't tell a reader to feel a certain emotion. You need to create a scene that triggers that emotion, and you do that by tapping into sensory information and concrete descriptions. Bringing your descriptions beyond the visual, focusing on sound, smell, and depending on the situation, taste, can be really effective here. Smell especially is really a really good driver of emotion. Social signals are also important in triggering emotions. Our brains are wired to read these signals from other people, so make sure that your character's body language and dialogue show what sort of emotion you want to get across. Remember that you may not necessarily want the reader to feel exactly what the character does. Oftentimes their emotional reaction is going to be filtered through the reader's opinion of that character, which is something else you need to cultivate. Keep the writing grounded, always try to incorporate multiple senses, and think about how character reactions can drive home the emotions, and your writing will do a much better job of getting a rise out of the reader. Just like you watching this video got a rise out of you watching this video. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this video and found the advice in it useful. If you want to see more stuff like this, you can check out all my other writing advice related videos and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.